All right, so today we're going to run through the steps to install Poseidon and get it up and running with a faucet network. Um, so I've already pulled down the source code and I've already pre-built the um, Debian package, which you can go download. Um, details for that are on uh, the readme of the repo, but I'm just gonna use one that I've already built locally. Um, so it's in my dist folder here. And I'm just going to do um, dpackage install. And that's going to run for a few moments. All right, so now that that is uh, finished downloading and installing, um, it's actually going to start running. Um, this process called event and spinning everything up, but we want to actually um, also start uh, faucet since that's not running. So Poseidon provides a nice little helper to do that, so you don't have to worry about it. So I will just go ahead and uh, run that helper script, which will start up faucet uh, and Poseidon together with all the the components that um, each tool needs from the. Alright, so now that that's finished, that has um, started Faucet and restarted Poseidon knowing that Faucet's there now. So if we do Docker, another Docker PS, you can see we've got all of these Faucet containers and then it just restarted that vent container, which is going to spin up all of the pieces that Poseidon needs. While that's happening, um, the first thing we want to do is um, create our Faucet YAML, which will define what switches it knows about. So for the setup today, uh, we've got an 8-port Ally Talysis uh, X230. So let's go ahead and write that um, <coughs> faucet file. Uh, so first thing we want to do is define a VLAN. Uh, I'm going to call it demo for this. And I'm going to give it a ID, which will be 10. And once we've got that, then we want to add a data path. Um, which is their switch. Uh, I'm just going to call it X230 since that's what we're using. And uh, I've already pre-configured on the switch the MAC address to be 2, just for simplicity of writing this config file. Otherwise, this DPID would be the MAC address of your switch. Uh, and then I'm going to specify the hardware to be Alitalysis. And then I'm going to define the interfaces. So uh, as I mentioned, there's eight ports. Um, the eighth port I'm going to use is my control plane. Uh, so I'm not going to define it here for something that faucet will control. You could do that, um, but it complicates things. So I'm, I'm going to just go the easy path for this particular installation. So we define each of the interfaces and then give those a native VLAN for them to be on which since we already defined demo as a VLAN, I'm going to use that. And then I'm just going to repeat this for the remaining interfaces. And then update the names, which are the number of the interfaces to be appropriate. OK. And for now, that's all we need to do in our config file. Uh, at this point, we should be able to tail the uh, faucet logs. And you can see it did a cold start, configured some ports, um, and now it's actually starting to learn things on the various ports. So um, what I have plugged in is in port 1 is going to become our mirror port for Poseidon. Um, and then I have got in ports 3 and port 4, um, two Raspberry Pis, which are going to be um, part of the next piece I'm going to show in this setup um, for doing automated ACLs. Uh, and then in port 7 is my uplink to the internet. And port 8, as I mentioned, which isn't shown here because it's not being controlled by Faucet, is the control plane, um, which is the, the direct um, management part where faucet tells the switch what to do. All right, so 
since that's up, we'll go ahead and take a look. Uh, all right, so you can see over here our containers. Um, we've got a side and vent, a bunch of different things. So it looks like everything is up and running, which is great. So we'll go ahead and close that. And if we do side and logs, you'll see it's actually getting faucet events and doing config changes. So if I go look at my faucet config again, which we just created a second ago, um, we need to define this port one as our mirror port, since this is what we decided. Um, so first of all, we want to remove the native VLAN. And instead, we want to uh, add a description so we remember what it is and why we're doing it. And we want it to be an output only port. Alright, and then just save that. And the faucet will automatically pick up that change because we started it with the um, config reload option. Uh, which was in that helper script that we used. Let's say, it's getting faucet events, which is good. And ah, okay. So now we see it updated this. It added a mirror from ports three and four, which are the two Raspberry Pis, which is good. Um, so while that's going, I can go into the Poseidon shell and poke around to see what Poseidon knows. I just do a show all. You can see I've got two devices. It picked up the Ethernet vendor to be Raspberry, which is good. We know the IP addresses. Uh, we don't quite know the role yet or the operating system yet, but that's because we're actively mirroring the traffic so that it can learn those things. Um, those mirrors right now typically would be set for 15 minutes. Um, I think I configured mine to be yeah, so I, just, I set this reinvestigation frequency to 180, which is in seconds, so it's only doing three minutes. So if we do a Docker, uh, lazy Docker again, you'll see there are these two other kind of randomly named containers after Poseidon. Those are our two um, containers uh, running packet capture against that port against filtered on those IPs that it was told to investigate. So we'll wait for those to finish. They shouldn't be running too much longer. They've been oops, uh, up about a minute at this point. All right, so now they've been running for two minutes. So should be finishing up here shortly. And what's going to happen when those finish is they're going to write out um, their files into slash opt and files. Right now there's nothing, but they will create two um, PCAP files from those containers. And uh, then it will take those uh, packet captures and analyze them uh, against a couple different tools, one of which is POF, which just does operating system fingerprinting, another one which is network ML, which does machine learning uh, to do role classification and anomaly detection. And then those results will get populated into that um, CLI. All right, so cool. So these two new end capture containers here are up four seconds, up six seconds. So the original two we were just looking at for three minutes, um, they finished and they spun up these other post processing analysis ones and then. Faucet said, hey, I've got means to go investigate now that you're done with two other new mirror ports. So if I just quickly look at my Faucet YAML again, um, it looks the same, but it's probably um, now capturing on a different filter uh, based on what Faucet told Poseidon that it knows about the network. And if we look again in our opt pent files, we can see here the two packet captures I was talking about, and now it's starting to create additional lower level analysis based on those captures. So if we go back into our shell and do a show all, um, we're starting to get data populated now. So it knows one of them is running Linux, which is good, um, it should be. And this will continue to get 
filled out as Poseidon learns more things and, and captures more data. Uh, the other thing that we can talk about is how to do automated ACL changes. So I'll go ahead and quit this. And what I wanted to do first is we didn't actually change anything in the ACLs, so everything's open. Um, so if I go ahead and you know SSH into one of these Raspberry Pis, um, it should be open to get to everything. So if I ping Google, that works, cool. Um, and the other thing is, so these two Raspberry Pis are just set to um, start randomly grabbing things from the internet um, just to simulate um, traffic, which uh, we intend to um, simulate the role of a developer workstation. Um, just to, to quickly verify that, that things work before we change them, um, I can do a telnet to say SMTP Gmail uh, on port 465, and that works. And additionally, I should be able to get to you know, google.com on port 80. And similarly, I should be able to get to google.com on 443. Cool. So. Now that we verified that the Raspberry Pis can do those things uh, as we expect them, we're going to add in these automated ACLs uh, that should trigger based on the roles and the operating systems that they, they get classified into. Um, it will automatically um, kind of lock down the system if it falls under uh, what we specify. So first of all, I've pre-populated, oops, let me get out of the Raspberry Pi. I pre-populated an ACLs YAML file, which is um, what Fawcett already accepts. It's nothing specific to Poseidon. So I'll just go ahead and show you what we've got there. Um, so we've got this protect me ACL, which includes dropping HTTP and HTTPS to everything uh, and allowing everything else. Uh, we have a scary IPv6 one which drops all IPv6 traffic and allows us everything else. And then we have a scary mail one, which drops all SMTP uh, with SSL and allows everything else. So those things that we just tried a second ago, where I could you know, get to Gmail over 465, and I could get to Google over 80 and 443. If these rules apply, um, that should no longer work. So we're gonna go, uh, define how those uh, might get applied. To do that, there is a couple things we need to change. So first of all, inside of opt Poseidon, there is a rules, uh, oh, I'm doing CD, that's why, sorry. Inside of opt Poseidon, there's a rules YAML and this one I've already also pre-populated to keep it simple. Um, I don't want this, oh, sorry, it's read-only. Uh, I don't care about including ACLs here. I'm actually gonna do it in the, the faucet YAML in a second. Um, but so first of all, I've got this rule name one, uh, and it's got two rules that have to both apply for this to happen. Uh, the first one is uh, a key off of the operating system, and it says if it's a Mac, apply these rules. We don't have these ACLs, so I'm going to change this. And I also don't have a Mac here, so I'm going to change that to Linux. And I want to do, um, let's say, protect me and scary IPv6, for example. And then the second one that has to apply is a role, and I don't have any printers. Um, but what we're trying to do is simulate developer workstation, so I'm going to do that. And if it's developer workstation with at least 50% confidence, then we're going to say apply scary mail. So what this will do is if something comes back as both Linux and a developer workstation with more than 50% confidence, then it will apply 
the protect me scary IPv6 and scary mail ACLs. And then we have a different rule here that says if the behavior is abnormal, um, we can do an ACL. So for here, we'll just do um, protect me. And I don't think I'm going to have abnormal behavior, so it's actually trigger normal just to show that that might work. Um, and I don't need this no internal one for what we're doing, so I'm just going to get rid of that, and that will be all we need. Now that I've got that, um, there's one other thing I want to do is activate this uh, input side. And so this is not automatically enabled um, by default, so we're going to go ahead and change that uh, in our plugin config. Um, so we have this automated ACLs uh, right here, and we're going to just set that to be true. And that change requires a Poseidon restart, so we'll go ahead and do that. Poseidon's back up and running. Let's go ahead and look back in the shell and see what we've got going. All right, so we've got two things that are now identified as Linux. The role has not come back yet. Um, it's possible it's role of network ML you should see something that's not just no data you should see you know developer workstation printer whatever and that that in combination with this operating system um, is what will trigger those automated ACL rules that we just created the other thing I can do just to demonstrate the capability is change my rules for Poseidon. So we specified that it had to be Linux and it had to be a developer workstation. Um, what I can do is say we don't have a developer workstation yet, so I'm just going to say if it's Linux, which both of these should apply to, set protect me and scary IPv6. And that gets applied automatically by me making that change. So if I do um, the faucet YAML, you should see that get applied soon. Because if I do Poseidon shell, we have both of the Raspberry Pis here showing as Linux. So let's see what's going on. Ah, all right. So we see. IPv4 OS match for that and for that, both the Linux and it's saying rule name one, which is what we called that. And if we take a look now again at our faucet YAML, you can see it just applied the ACLs for both Protect Me and Scary IPv6 to both port three and both port four. Um, and that's, that's the point of that. Now, just to demonstrate the point, if if those devices were to change, those ACLs will automatically get updated. So what I'm going to do, instead of changing the OS on the device, uh, which would be um, complicated, um, instead I'm just going to change the value of this to be something else. And give this a minute for it to run through its paces. Let's see if that applied. It's still active. Um, currently for it to detect that we changed that, um, Poseidon needs to, s to notice that an endpoint changed. So normally, if the endpoint changed, it would update the ACLs, which, which is what we want. Um, I, I cheated and changed the ACLs um, without the endpoint changing. So we're waiting for an endpoint change to happen um, for it to activate that, essentially. Here we go. All right, so we detected a change, and now it's removing a no longer needed ACL of all of these things. Um, and you can see that the automated ACLs did the following, um, which is great. So now if we look back at our YAML file, um, these ACLs are set to nothing again. So it get to. And that's all for this uh, time around. Um, stay tuned for more in-depth bits about using Poseidon. Thank you.